everybody. Early game started fantastically here for BRB. We said, BRB, let me get a couple of kills jumping into this early game. They do the double kill over to the Lee Sin. It didn't stop there. Things continue good for them, but towards the two Barons of the later game, somehow, some way, Domlin Gaming were able to come back and win this game. It kind of undersells Brion Blade to say they were the you know, effectively the leader of this game for the majority of it. They're definitely the moral victors in one way because they played way better than expectation here for a new lineup, five new players put together on the former Kongdom Monster, now Brion Blade roster. But this Baron Steel, as we were just analyzing Brion Blade's excellent team fight victory, gave down one a chance and then you cast your mind back to all previous scenarios where comebacks have happened. This is the biggest comeback we've had in the Casper Cup. We've had a Casper Cup that's been about early snowball, but it was only as we came on that we saw the value in a game that should have been decided before 50,000 golds worth of items have been put together by Dam One Gaming. They steal it away, and the only player who should leave this game with his head held high is, of course, the top laner of Dam One Gaming. That is Nogari, who had a really big performance, just outrageously beat the Sire matchup, kind of as expected. It's a good matchup for the Rise, but also was so on point at disengaging before the threat was going to come in to gank him as he was in the 4-1 situation. The top laner sense that Nogari couldn't show in the promotion tournament was on full display here, and that is the sort of thing where you start doing your top laner tier lists. Suddenly, for me at least, he definitely rises at least a bit. There are multiple things. You know, he escaped every gank, the, the ward placements that he had, even in the lane. I saw the one that spotted the uh, the Cassiopeia that was coming into the lane to try to go for that lane gank against him that one time, and that saved him. He, he backed off. He just played it safe, told his team. And just the little things like that are times where you can actually win a game for your team as a top laner in competitive League of Legends. So guys, we are going to have some swaps here in the roster. Canyon coming in for Punch, maybe better known as Jug King on the ladder, and Beryl going to be replacing Hoyt. Beryl comes in, just to another look, so we will have Nuclear, and not Ares, I believe his new name is now Calm, but BBQ Ares, the second AD carry there behind Ghost is now the secondary AD carry on the lineup. They won't be going for the full change, no wholesale changes. I was in with a couple of teams, and that means that Canyon makes his debut. For the majority of summer, you and I, and I think many analysts out there, stared at Korean solo queue and said, who is this Jug King guy entrenched in the top two with an outrageous Talia win rate? We had heard it was on fleek, the other jungler for Team Battle Comics, now Sandbox Gaming. But the late word came in from a couple of pro players I talked to who said, no, no, this is the sub jungler. You don't know about him. He's not actually legal to play yet, only 16 years of age. But this is Jug King is Canyon who is the jungler for the secondary match here. Excellent aggressive jungler, but very, very young. Just a little bit over 17 years of Western age. Going to be very cool for him to get his first professional game. A lot of people have been waiting to see him on the rift. Yeah, it's a guy who's been up towards the top forever, and I cannot wait to see what he can do here. Perhaps maybe play a little bit better than Punch did in the early game. That would be very much wanted, especially after Punch got his Kha'Zix in the first rotation in the pick and ban and still was not able to do much until the later game. But either way, we should be jumping into the pick and ban here in just a moment on the side of Brian Blade. No changes from them, even though they do have some other cool names such as Bangje in the jungle. I think Broccoli was decent. It was funny, you were talking about that smite. Um, the Kha'Zix uh, punch was actually right on time, and then Leeson immediately smited the Kha'Zix, which might have just been to say that's to what his I team, like, oh, well, I smited, I just, oh, you know. That's oh. the funny thing I was trying to say, is like, <laughs> he just smited, so he had smite on cooldown once yeah, yeah. on his tab. They're like, oh, okay, I guess it was close, but no. It was just we the, saw everything yeah. in the super slow-mo. That's Sorry. what we need. We need it so we can name and shame. So shame <laughs> on you, Broccoli. You missed Smite one time. What great jungler has ever missed a Smite? I, know, I, know I haven't, them. so yeah. no one else could have. Papa Smithy never misses Smite, only when he plays with me. I don't remember missing a Smite with you or a Shockwave. <laughs> I am super clutch at all moments. Yeah, I'm sure. So as these players are swapping in and swapping out, they're going to have to change their keyboards, get their settings correct, you know, switch the key bindings, all that kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to be thrown on camera and have a little bit of time to talk with you guys. If you're here and you're waiting for SKT, that is going to come a little bit later at 8 p.m. You do not want to miss that matchup of SKT versus APK Just to Prince. know even who's starting for SKT, because there's so many great players in the lineup, things like the jungle choice, Haru or Clid. 
depending on who you're talking to. They have different answers for that. So SKT, a lot of hype. Again, for me, still Dumb One Gaming, a lot of hype because who will be the starting jungler? Like We thought we understood the last kind of roster decision I remember that kind of echoes this is if you remember when Griffin came into the LCK in summer season, how many games would Tovi play as a super young 17-year-old yeah. when it was rather game one, Tovi game two, and we thought, ah, oh, we understand it now. It's going to be an onboarding process. And then maybe three matches in, they're like, nope, only Tovi. Tovi's the yeah. starter. Canyon is clearly an insane mechanical talent. You cannot be top two with just the most outrageous win rates we've seen along. That's why it was Sherlock Holmes' duty of who the hell is this guy? We've had that a couple of times. Sherlock it was also Papa. the other one you remember is when uh, Mobzio, that was actually uh, Blank's a new account. Yeah. That was, he was the last jungle where I was like, who the hell is this guy? Top 10 with an incredible yeah. win rate. That was Blank. And unfortunately for SKT fans, he can never really translate that this year. Definitely when it comes to Canyon, people are sky high in terms of hopes. But in Korea, when it's a 17-year-old talent, for me, their mechanical skill hasn't really necessarily been the pass-fail for whether they worked as a 17-year-old. Think of yeah. BDD. By far the most hyped rookie debut since Faker was BDD. Everyone wanted to see BDD play. They were counting it down. They were circling dates on calendars. He came in for CJ, had some good moments. But because CJ as a whole were falling apart, BDD couldn't really change that. And I think when it comes to someone like Canyon, it'll be things like mentality. It'll be things like how the other players can onboard him into the, com to the competitive game because it is a different game to solo queue. We've heard that as a boiler point uh, so many different times. So I'm very interested to see, we won't know it for today, but just how Canyon looks and then how Canyon will be integrated because when there's that much raw talent, Eventually, the pin will drop, and he will be a great jungle. I think we're already willing to say that just based on mm -hmm. his solo queue reputation, but whether that's spring season, whether that's Kesper Cup, whether he's the starter for more games than Punch and Kesper Cup, that's things that are much more up in the air. And again, this is what Kesper Cup is so fun for before the LCK season even does start, because you know we'll eventually get over to the LCK 2019, and if we didn't have Kesper Cup, we would have just been like, you know, we're going to have to solve all that right then, right there. But actually, we get this one-month preview before everything happens where they kind of get to work their way up the ladder. They're you know, earning through, about us. They're earning our love and attention. Yeah, through a challenger team, through a stronger team. And eventually, these players are going to have to prove to each other and to us that they are the ones that deserve that starting spot. So pick and bands have started either way. This time, Dom on, on the blue side. Let's see where they want to go with this one. First professional game of the Jug King. Canyon, the tournament ID for Jug King, the prodigious young jungler that Damwon Gaming have had on their roster for a while, but only been able to use for the Kesper Cup. Bands start coming through, and kind of weird to see Damwon banning away Flex Assassins, but for Blue side, they don't want to have any ambiguities about what Brianna's is doing on red. And the Caitlyn ban, actually, against Alive. Caitlyn's probably surprised us the most. I thought we'd see no Caitlyn, and then Caitlyn looked really good. Montgomery Yussi was using it over on the side of KEG Soul. Mm -hmm. Some respect is shown, and it also does free up the Lucian to actually be a lot more lane dominant. Cassiopeia down, uh, Caitlyn down. Can the Lucian dodge a Draven is kind of the interesting question now when it comes to bot lane. Because remember, Nico was global banned as well and would have been another consideration to lane against bot lane Lucian. Could also consider just waiting and picking some other stuff up here before that Lucian hovering the Orn. But we haven't seen him yet. Doubt we will see him for this Casper Cup unless a bunch of top lane tank bans come in and they desperately need one. We saw Poppy before we even saw Orn. Camille and Urga very early on, so deciding that that is going to be their one-two punch in the top and jungle. Now, Karzix is taken early, but this is a big change of pace. No longer is it, give me your best shot on Syndra, I'm playing Katarina. It's Galio Karzix, a KT Rolster favorite. Score and Pawn play this so many different times for KT Rolster in 2017 because Karzix wants to invade and make it as bloody as possible, and that ultimate from the Galio makes those invades much more reliable. Globals are Karzix's best friend. So we're going to get a Karzix versus Karzix battle. That's a fun scientific experiment to compare Punch and Canyon on decision making because it was Punch getting caught out a couple of times. The Galio is very powerful on this patch. Not as much wave clear, but just as much death can be sent out with those winds of war. As you're taking, just for a bit of safety, wants to disengage as much as possible. Can go into Iceborne Gauntlet, not get one shot by the Kha'Zix. So nice little draft phase so far here. Not really too much tip the hand on the right or the left of the screen. 
First ban goes into one of Nogari's picks. He already had his way with Cube in game number one. Cube gonna want to find a bit more of a competitive matchup in game number two. Yeah, just uh, calling for that Urgotten saying, I just want to survive. I don't, I don't want to get destroyed up in the top side. Give me some bans alongside that. They probably won't go for their top pick just yet. We're going to see some other bans coming out here, some stuff that's pretty good against the Galio to the Lissandra. We haven't seen too much picked just yet, but definitely is one of those better mm. mid laners. Banning away Kenny. Kenny actually going to eat a ban here for Nogari as well. So I guess he just wants to play a tank and get through the laning phase. Cube is thinking this one. See what he wants to actually put together, though. The cannon ban is an intriguing one. In our second set, we might see a cannon ban against APK Prince, and that'll amusingly be against Fury's bot lane AP cannon, as he's the only AP cannon bot lane player out there. But in this one, most likely a top lane ban, unless Damwon Gaming have been scrimming against APK Prince. Sinju gonna be banned away. That's caused some nice lane control for Fate. And you're all about the flex picks in this meta. They put together the Rise. Rise could lane against Galio, could lane against most tops. Damwon Gaming, they need a top laner, they need a support. What do they make of their draft? Yeah, I mean, the Rise was the one thing that stuck out for me that maybe Damwon Gaming could consider once again up in the top side, but that first pick on the red side, fourth pick there, is going to shut that down. We are going to see another Alistair coming in here. Definitely one of the better supports hey. so far. What we doing here? I see a Yasuo hover and a lot of knockups. Are we doing it, Dumb One Gaming? The Galio is locked in already, so we think that will be mid. Top lane, many different ways you can go into this decision. The Scion will be a lot safer of a choice, and it seems like Scion makes more sense in this case. So. Karsix and Lucian are going to be the big damage dealers outside of Galio Burst if he gets going. Final pick has actually left at the feet of the support here. So a support counter pick or at least a champion to round out the draft. Very low follow-up engage to the Camille. Right now Camille's diving in all in her lonesome and she still will be. So they kind of choose between do we want a Rakan to help out Camille dive into a team fight or do we just want to play a pick comp with some safety and they fall back to the pick comp. They still have very strong pick but not about the 5v5 on the side of Breon Blade. Meanwhile, Damwon Gaming, it's the Canyon show here. Kha'Zix can do so much when you have the god tier lanes to gank for. Hard crowd control, more than you can eat. It's all you can eat buffet in top mid lane and bot lane when you have Scion, Galio, and Alistair in your lane. So Canyon can do a whole lot here. And here's, I'm gonna shout out my favorite thing about this draft. The one thing Down One Gaming has been able to do for us. Never before have we swapped out two players, played the exact same champions, and now we can compare the Alistair and uh, Kha'Zix <laughs> play one, yeah. one on one. So now we'll know who the best Alistair and who the best Kha'Zix is on Down One Gaming. Also, Nuclear is going to get a chance to show what he can do as a Lucian in a not Cassiopeia OP lane, right? He's going to have a much easier lane going up against the Ezreal Tom Kent. Will maybe afford him some opportunity to get aggressive and, you know, kind of show off his stuff coming back into Korea and joining Dom1 Gaming. Didn't really like the Rakan when they were hovering that. I thought maybe you get a decent engage, but the follow up is going to be pretty weak. There's a lot of tanky members. You might just get chopped down right yep. away, especially with all of that burst damage that could come out from Lucian, Galio, and uh, the Kha'Zix, obviously. So Tom Kench, I feel like, makes a lot more sense. Played it the last time around. I think it could work out especially well with the Ezreal. If you're looking at your picks, more engage makes sense. When you look at the enemy, like you say, I think the pick comp makes a lot of sense. And maybe we'll make some sense of it with the coaches. I think we're due to hit here from the coaching staff of Brion Blade. So this is the coach from Brion Blade. So the first match, you guys must have been a bit disappointed. But you guys are winning up, up until the mid-game. So the pick ban must have been critical coming into the second game. And what conversations did you guys have? Yeah. First game definitely left a lot to want 
Four, so our team definitely didn't really do very well around the Baron. And the way that we moved in a macro sense also, I felt like we, we had to go over that in particular uh, compared to game number one, we have to improve that. So overall, the teamwork didn't seem all that bad. So this is based on challenger results, but I feel like our team is definitely de developing very well and they're doing quite well up against all the other challenger teams, so I'm not being hard on them. I, I actually want to encourage them for their development so far. So in pick and bend, seems like you guys are very careful about your top lane pick. Two tanks in a row, just trying to stay safe. So Noguri definitely a very aggressive top laner, so we're very careful picking around Noguri and just trying not to die, essentially, in the lane and lose that lane hard. So that's part of the reason why we did so safely pick and ban for that top lane. So, I mean, like we sense. said, they were doing a favor. They were saying, well, that was a pretty rough game. Let's give you a bit more information. They ended up giving a much more comfortable one. You see Scion from Nogre, you're like, oh, that's at least eight or nine champions into his champion pool. We're doing yeah. all right. The carries are removed. The farming phase is going to be there. And I look at Beyond Blade and I say, you guys did really well. Again, we were just thinking, dumb one gaming going to come in. Are they going to emulate? Fully to the letter, probably not of all the hype for there, but you thought at least the spirit of it would be they thought at least it would be, you know, pretty comfortable on the victory, but it ended up being a steal. It ended up being a pickpocket. Brion Blade as a challenger team, outside of some macro decisions around Baron. You delete Baron, they won that game, right? If there wasn't a Baron to fall back and be stolen into contested and winning the game, that was just gonna be a Brion Blade victory. So given that all, I think Brion Blade heads held high, and now we get to roll into game number two and see how that one looks. Yeah, definitely gives me hope that a potential game three could happen. Let's see how game number th two, though, is going to start off here as we jump into that right now. This time, Damon Gaming will start on the blue side with Brion Blade on the red side. Let's see if we have any early game shenanigans. Once again, all five members of Brion Blade looking for that opportunity, but spotted already. Bit of a 5v5 action potential there. I tell a lie, actually. Lucian and Alistair on a different mission here as the bot lane stays the same, but the players change. Remember, Beryl is in for Hoyt and Canyon, formerly known as Jug King in solo queue, a top 10 player for the better part of six months, is making his professional debut here. Young 17-year-old jungle. So side of Brion Blade, Deep Invade, they get down some wards. They know that Kha'Zix is really, it's kind of an Kha'Zix we trust draft when it comes to, honestly, the first kind of 25 minutes. The tempo of the game from Damwon Gaming is really Kha'Zix focused. They want to know where he's starting. And right now, they know not on the enemy red. Not on the enemy red. And it looks like he might just go for, well, okay. They're actually grouping up here. Going to start at around 130. Get that leash in. So nice amount of information is going to be given to them. But of course, wards plus put down by Damon Gaming as well. There's one up here towards the top side. If Camille wanted to go for a cheesy level 2 gank in the top lane, there's also one on the blue buff. So they know that he is not starting the blue. They are going to spot him going over the ward. So they should know exactly that he is nearly either going top or going into the blue buff. What an awesome prep ward. That was put down by the Kha'Zix, you remember. The Observer caught that one over the wall to spot justice in fact. Uh, buff to buff play. That's why Canyon knows to beeline for it. Oh, okay. I believe there might be a slight visual when you come over a blast plant into the corner of a brush, so it might have at least been expected there. Here's the smite battle, though. Waiting for that one, misses the stun, and Canyon there is going to go over to Canyon, but he uses abilities on the blue buff. He needs help right now. This Camille, though, it looks like he's going to actually be on the run. The leap comes in, oh. and here's Fate. He's going to pick up the first blood somehow, some way. Now Broccoli trying to get over the wall, doesn't have his flash anymore, but Fate trying to save his life, not going to be able to. Might be able to look for a follow-up kill here on the Showmaker. That's the two-second route. There's the slow from the Urgot as well. The flash forward, and that's a second kill now for BRB. The buff transfer is complete. Three buff transfers on those three kills, and they end up both being worn by the side of Breon Blade. 
Canyon put a lot of faith in his play, and it looked like he would just eke out a one-on-one -on -one kill. But it's not a one-on-one -on -one game. This is competitive play, and the backup is shown from the side of Breon Blade first. And remember, that's backup that had further to travel. This is on Dam One Gaming side. So let's watch the replay and work out what's happening in the one-on-one -on -one while also looking at the minimap. It looks like by the end, it is going to be Canyon when he jumps in, he's one auto away. But Fate is the bro status player here. He walks all the way around and flashes first while Galio is waiting. That already is great play by the enemy mid laner there. Fate and Broccoli showing better synergy than Showmaker and Canyon. Definitely one where you're in solo queue, and if the Rise gets there first against the Galio, you're going to be question mark pinging him. I mean, it's just not something that should have happened. They were fighting for a long time as well. So leave that up to Fate. I mean, Fate was in there, and good map reading from him, and not so much from Shomi. He got there first, and he also just, without even thinking, flashed over the wall. Remember, the Galio moved around and was waiting to pick up the exit kill after there was already the death on his jungler. So. A lot of faith and a lot of decisiveness shown. And decisiveness as a player is not a trait we've had to really talk about with Showmaker. We know we can have a lot of flair and look for kills and lock in Katarina in difficult matchups. But showing team decisiveness, it's much more selfless than actually trying to play for yourself, is something we're going to learn when at the top level over time, at least based on, again, one little sample size. This is Casper Cup. It's all about overreactions. Very nice play from Fate to back up his laner. It's definitely a good sign. I mean, we weren't expecting as much from Breon Blade as we were from Domlin, that's for sure. But these early games are just the two games in a row now going towards Breon Blade. You can say, hey, it's guest pick up. It's early. Team's getting used to it. But it's definitely telling when your team has trouble two games in a row up against a challenger team in the early game. So definitely some question marks being raised right now. And let's look back at our own analysis. How was Damon Gaming going to win this game? It was going to be Kha'Zix and Galio combo just really allowing aggressive plays, aggressive invasions from Canyon, solo QSK, I'm sure, looking for three and four bots wherever possible, and the Galio always threatening the hero's entrance to back them up. Already, they've been a little bit off the boil, a little bit off the page when it comes to team play, something we're going to need to inspect. And I'm sure people look at this draft and they wonder, why no Yasuo at the end? Why is it pretty tanky comp with not as many traditional damage dealers? What I want you to remember is the game has changed. This is the new meta, which is, honestly, you're playing for the first Baron. You're playing for, can we pick a champion around 18 to 25 minutes, get some Baron control, another pick, get the Baron, the game's over. You could end the game so easily with Baron, and honestly, even without Baron, remember the minions take more turret shots, they do more damage to turrets. It's easier to close games. It doesn't matter if your champions together don't win 35 minute team fights, because that's not the meta that people are prophesizing, that people are foreseeing at the current time. However, scratch all of that, Kha'Zix falls way behind then maybe they don't even have the damage to get those picks. Yeah. Or if you are that far behind, you're going to have to hope for one Baron steal into a kind of messed up Baron start by the enemy team. Ah, uh, yes. You never want to rely on enemy team mistakes, of course. You can just see down one guy like, yes, Baron throws are the reason we beat <laughs> this random challenger team. Exactly. That's uh, the last thing you want people to be saying. But I know that people are already saying that. So poor down one. Not the best start here. And not the best start in game number two either. Hopefully they can turn this around. Because uh, yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna be losing to Beyond Blade. Definitely makes Beyond Blade look really good. BR is so funny because in the Kespa Cup we have the uh, the position the players are playing and their name, so it's BRBB Alive is the name <laughs> on our client, which is so yeah. funny. Uh great. BRBB -R -B -B Alive. Yeah. The last, uh, yesterday, they were actually behind the name, so it would have been BRB -B Alive This is B. definitely a <laughs> rip in peace situation going on here, the BRBB. -B, -B. Yeah. be right back, back, Alive. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an interesting setup we have here. Watch on the top side. Very difficult to actually power through, but remember, the secondary shield in these traits in the Scion and the Urgots is usually pretty irrelevant because the ult from the Urgots based on just health numbers. It's all about threshold rather than effective health with the shield included. So you can, in fact, be ulted through that. We, of course, saw the other side of the coin, which was the Tom Kench living on 20 HP yesterday. That was the big highlight uh -huh. of our second series <laughs> of the day. But Urgot continues to do Urgot things. The CS 
Cube is so ecstatic about the effort and resources in Champ Select because for once, he's not dealing with a big CS lead coming out of Nuggery. Yeah, and he actually has that call too, so should be very happy with the way things are going there. It's funny with the, how the early game did start. Uh, Canyon was actually still able to get slightly ahead of Broccoli on the other side of the jungle matchup. And now look at this. Both junglers heading up to the top lane at level six, saying this is where we are going to find our first gank. Well, it seems like both of them were on the money, but the patience quotient is higher with Broccoli. Unfortunately for him, minion wave. There's no reason at all for Nogri to chase that. But he's going to stay back. Has the ultimate to stop the choo-choo train on the ultimate being enough to just fully disengage play, but I think this is Canyon using his time better than what we're seeing from Broccoli. Optimistic they can pick up this kill. It's full health and enough of a mana bar for a shield. That's a lot of health to get through even with Ignite and Urgot ultimate. So with all those variables in play, Canyon, consider what he understood there, which is there's a really good chance Camille is top. I need to be there for the counter gank. Okay, nothing happens. He is fully disengaged, gone straight to the Cloud Jake. It's going to be a freebie. That is very good map reading from Canyon, reminiscent of some of the great map reads that we saw from another jungler that made a big name for himself, Tarzan, in LCK Summer. Yeah, and he gets the confirmation there on the ward. Finally, sees the Camille coming over to the top side. Should be feeling very happy with himself. Looks that like is the a scuttle bigger crab play. timing was also right on time to predict that as well. That is a bigger play for me, Valdez, than a random quadra kill with his leap resets. That being able to read the map so well and take the Drake into the blue buff is great from Kenny. Now he's going to go a bit more greedy. <laughs> Did you jinx him, Papa Smithy? No, looks like he is going to get away, but he did have to use everything, getting a little bit greedy for the blue. Again, the, let the extra part, maybe that's where he still has some adaptations to make, but the first part is what should really be applauded. Very smart map brew from Canyon. He got too greedy, too stylish, and got punished for it. Dumb on gaming, used to that at this point. They back away. Still, that's the only separator of the two teams after that first... Uh, bevy of kills, the three that went down. Canyon's nice map read does give a Mountain Drake, kind of out of nowhere. Yeah, you always talk about uh, how this game seems to be decided based on the first Baron. Maybe you get a pick into the Baron, maybe something else happens. You have a very strong early game and you set up vision around the Baron and that's how you get it, but Mountain Drake definitely seems to be one of those Drakes that will help you uh, succeed in that goal. Maybe the Infernal Drake can help you find the kills to set up that barrel. Okay. Play. Speaking of which, nice flash away, but you got a Galio on your back. The flash through from Nogudi is going to get that knock up as well. Here's Showmaker is going to pick up the kill on the backside. And Beryl going deep here on the Broccoli is going to find him alone. The solo kill from Beryl onto Camille sees him at low health. All right, lock it in. Best Alistair on the lineup <laughs> is definitely Beryl. Move away from all those amazing Hoyt carry performances, the promotion tournament. It's all about Beryl going and assassinating the enemy jungler. He doesn't like Broccoli. I don't think he eats his Broccoli, or maybe he eats it for breakfast. Well. Hard to tell with a play like that. But on the top side, we should talk about this one. Think back to Worlds. Do you remember Scions doing really well in matchups that seem stacked towards the Urgot or the Aatrox? That reminds me of the Shy and his Iceborne Gauntlet Scion being able to do well in big matchups. The Shy esque was the play up top lane. As Barrel says, this is my kill, and he has his way with Broccoli. He's still got enough trample damage. Doesn't matter if he's nerfed. It was just Camille doing that gromp on super low health. That was really unfortunate. And it wasn't even Nuclear that got there first. It was Beryl. He was so bloodthirsty. He was the one that was going to get the kill. Gauntlet Scion again. Shades of the Shy doing well against an Urga. A kill for the Alistair. This is more the style and flair that Dam One Gaming are known for. Now their style and flair has been turned against them multiple times by Brion Blade. Now it's the Brion Blade start where the last couple of moments you need to pace yourself, need to take that deep breath. You're still in a great spot. This game is not snowballed out of control yet. Not just yet. We'll see if you foreshadow the end and maybe a game three would be at the chagrin of a lot of SKT fans, no doubt. But uh, I would be happy to watch another game of Dom One. Why not? They've been putting on a, a show so far alongside Brian Blade, who is providing a lot more than we expected. They're being very competitive. This is very competitive yeah. stuff coming out from Brian Blade. But suddenly, Urgot's losing in CS. But the Galio is two kills in. How's this trade going to go? Remember, these trades with the 
proc coming through from the rune here, going for Gasp of the Undying and the Icebond Gauntlet. Even Urgot is being punched through at some decent clip. Broccoli trying to go for the 12-minute Rift Tail. It already has been caught. Yeah, it's the same ward that we saw in level one by the Kha'Zix. Don't think it was the Kha'Zix this time, but it spots the Camille in the exact same thing, this time trying to sneak away the Rifter. Man, if you could have a tactical pause in a League of Legends game, that would have been the tactical pause. After level one would be, this is where they put their ward, because they're, you know, opting yeah. into it and standing on that rake again and again and being caught. So really good ward there. And this is the sort of ward that kind of reminds me of some of the wards we saw, like ward patterns against an Evelyn evolving into ward in the cabs, into the ward just to the left of the Baron pit that isn't caught by the control ward. It's the sort of ward that teams will replicate and then teams will bait and expect, loving the ward spot, and so far it's gotten done one gaming. Most of their meaningful advantages in game number two. It's been huge. I mean, that's a really popular wall to hop over as the Camille, so. They, they've done their research against the Camille. I mean, the, all these players are at the top level. The coach probably reminded them, hey, you're going up against Camille. Remember that ward. And the team, definitely listening. So they could just kind of rein it in and not be so showmakery and just play a more solid kind of game. I feel like Dom1 definitely do have the potential to be a big team in the LCK. But again, we'll have to wait how they do up against a... Uh, much bigger team than Brion Blade. And shifting our attention away from Brion Blade and Dumb on Gaming to kind of a meta point, because I'm sure a lot of people are trying to understand 824B through the games we're seeing. Do notice that Kha'Zix and Camille both skipping the Tiamat. We've seen no Tiamat jungles after the gold increase. We're on the live patch, 824B. Laners that bought Tiamat before are still going to buy Tiamat. Wave pushing is still important, but buying that 1325 gold Tiamat compared to, say, the Caulfield's Warhammer, which was always the way, we're going back to the Warhammer, going back to the early uh, Warrior. At the end of the day, my, my kind of read on the meta when it came to the Tiamat nurse, because some people were really against it, saying, come on, this item, this is core to my build, I don't get a lot of gold, I need my Tiamat at 1,200 gold, is it did too much. If you're not buying Warrior straight up, one of the most gold-efficient items in the game gives you a hilarious amount of AD on completion, you must be getting a pretty sick item, and Tiamat was just a little bit too far up there as a jungle alternative. 125 gold later, the Tiamat is gone, the Warrior is still great, so jungle players deal with it. Yeah, it's a good thing to deal with, and uh, I just wanted to point out a great communication effort there by Damon Gaming. They say, hey, it's very common, you go for the second Drake, that the Rift Herald is going to be stolen by the enemy jungler. But Nuggery, during that time, he lets a wave come into his turret. He doesn't really mind because he goes over the Rift Herald, puts down a ward, gets the Scuttle Crab as well, and says, Camille is not going to get this on my watch. And now, after getting the second Mountain Drake, they can take this even faster, get position on this objective, and Damwon's going to take both of them. They got double dessert, Valdez. Both dessert options looking good. The pecan pie and the apple pie, both looking delicious. They got both pies. They're feeling pretty yeah. ecstatic about what happened here. And I think already, just what, three match days into Kespa Cup, if you don't have a plan around a 10 to 13 minute Rift Herald, you're actually making a big miss by almost like a fail flash at this point because both yeah. are such big objectives that you need to have a plan for both or at minimum, secure one with all of your vision. If you get neither, that is a lot of egg on your face. And unfortunately for the side of Brion Blade, double mountain means some nice wave kit. It also meant that the uh, speed of the take on that Rift Herald was even faster. They weren't ready for it. They're not ready for Noggery winning trades against the Urgot this early on the Icebound Gauntlet Scion either. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of got to feel bad for... I'm going to hold that thought because we have a live in a lot of trouble here. The bottom lane, really nice headbutt, just trying to gain distance. All the TPs are coming into the bot lane. You can't cancel those now. You're on a one-way trip. That poor Urgot was so dead. And now Hyde is oh. going to go down. A huge ultimate from Nuggery. He's making another name for himself. There's the double kill. Three kills in the bot lane and a turret for Damwon Gaming. Damwon Gaming showing their style. Things coming together with Hoyt out of the lineup, we punch out of the lineup, we get Canyon and Beryl in, and suddenly everything they touch, the Midas touch, is turning to gold. Here are the replays. Alive goes in with the aggressive uh, play that we saw Stitch doing and punished a couple of times yesterday. In the wound direction he goes, and with the teleports guaranteed, and the Realm Warp coming down, Damwon Gaming can just turn onto one target, and one target goes down, one target goes down, and Nogari says, I'm pretty damn tanky with all this armor. I don't give any mundos about a turret. The kills go to them. It's a 2,000 gold lead. And now Damon Gaming are really unleashed on the map. 
Just a fantastic play overall, but just watching the replay as you were talking, Papa, it was so funny. Uh, people were talking about the new Galio and how that ultimate is just totally nerfed and how it's awful now, but the burst damage he gets with the new meta item build of the Proto Belt is unbelievable. If he gets a full combo onto any squishy, he's gonna 100 to 0 that person, guaranteed. It's like insane because the entire Proto Belt goes straight into their face because it's Galio. He's gonna be right on top of you. So, uh,. 4 1 and 0 now, and an 800 gold bounty. You gotta think that Showmaker's feeling pretty good. And this is the Galio that gets back. This is the Galio that's way ahead. A second big Galio we've had in the early game, and uh, you're right. We're one rotationing people. The moment a Galio takes Sork Boots, remember he even has Magic versus <laughs> Scaling in his kit. Yeah. He's doing true damage to some of these people with double pen. He's got a Katarina build going on. Maybe that'd be a Gunblade instead of a mm. uh, Protobelt, but you get Maybe what I mean the there. the next level meta there for the Galio is getting Gunblade next time. You know how we had some players in past metas who are kind of a manner build when they were winning? They're like, I'm buying Magi's and whoever I play. Famously, PDD, the old top laner now. Shoutcaster on the Chinese stream was on Victus Gaming top laner. Like to build the Yoma's Ghost Blade on Shen and other random champions yeah. when he was winning. Maybe we just have double pen every time from Showmaker because Double Ben does the big deeps. He's doing big deeps this game, and Damon gave me a kind of one team wipe away from really just ending this game because all over the map, they're out rotating and styling on Brion Blade. Yeah, game number one was definitely a gigantic question mark for Damon Gaming. The early game here, yeah, it's it's a split second decision. Maybe fate was quicker that time around, sure. But now we get to the mid game and it's like, oh boy. Now we can see why Damon Gaming was the big favorite coming up here up against Brian Blade. Well, let's just have to wait and see how much damage that Galio is actually gonna do. He has six stacks on his Dark Seal now. We'll see if he does Opt into that Magi, as you were I was gonna mentioning. Say, yes, no question. What are the odds on Magi's from Showmaker? I say 90%. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'd say probably 95. I mean, this oh. guy, he's done it before, right? 95? Okay, the difference between 90 and 95 is if he dies, does he still build the Magi? Well, to me, that's the 5% difference mm. there. Because uh, the answer might be yes. It is Showmaker <laughs> we're talking about here. Showmaker thinking about a flash ult. Sorry, a flash uh, W, but sadly flash on cooldown for now. They're all about setting up for this Mountain Drake. will be the third. That means a lot of epic monster damage and turret pushing damage. Oh, comes through. Not going to steal after the nerf. Does a lot of damage, though, to all the champions. Barrel is getting in there. He is going to go down in the end, and everybody dodges it. But look at the Galio damage on the top side. This is what I'm talking oh! about. There's the Proto Belt onto an Urgot. I thought that guy was supposed to have health. I guess not. He's going to have to flash over the wall. Fate alone is not going to do it. Nuclear trying to go 1v3 up in the top side. Going to decide against it, but oh boy. Showmaker's got an AoE Vagar ultimate with this Q. It just goes and deletes people wherever they stand. 800 damage for you and you and you. Oprah Winfrey will be proud with how much is being given out here by Showmaker. We're going to watch the replay. We knew he was ready for a fight. Beryl dies early and opens up, and opens up an Urgot ultimate. But look at the fear. It actually doesn't affect anyone. And then Showmaker says, how many more Magi stacks can I get in this team fight? I gotta start playing some Galio. This is uh, pretty insane what you could do with full AP Galio if things go well, especially in the early game, because I mean, he's still pretty tanky. Didn't go for the Magi's oh. just yet. He finished his Morellos and got a pretty long rod, though. I think, I, I think that's pretty good. A mistake is all I'll say about that one. Where are the Magi stacks going to come from, I ask? But maybe the 10 stack will have to be evolved after a further Team 5 victory. The lure of the Needless Large Rod and competitive play is always there. Showmaker walks back again and needs the Proto Belt to help with Wave Clear. But Wave Clear is important outside this laning phase for now. There's no advantages that Brion Blade have to make this about just a siege from them. They would love to be sieging with Ezreal, but that's not looking possible. Ezreal also has gone for a what about later build here? Going for the double tier that we saw Sang Yun heavily preferring. And there is still some validity to, man, maybe we can win team fights in 35 minutes. But 14 minutes in this meta is a really long time. And Dum One Gaming with flashback up on the Galio, a kind of a baron away from closing the door on Brion Blade. They were thinking about closing in on Showmaker up there in the top side. Obviously, the rise has done pretty well in the lane, at least, hasn't gone down, has a kill and two assists, has even more CS than the Galio. So Ryze definitely could be one of the guys on your team where you're banking on him to once again do the carrying, except this time for Brion Blade. Fortunately, though, the Galio on the top side, Showmaker was able to back off. And we're just going to 
sit here and farm up a bit. The first Baron, as you mentioned, that's going to be the big one. And so far, you take a look at a vision. There's only a couple of control wards nearby, and that's about it for Brian. And if we had heart monitors on the players, which, yeah, you know, think about it, Riot Games, maybe that would be cool. They'd be so high right now because they're against Kha'Zix and Pick CC and Burst Damage. A lot of flat pen stacking with three Mountain Drake teams. How do you ever get near the Baron <laughs> to ward it after 20 minutes? Ryze is like, I'm really enjoying this brush to the right of my inner turret. This is all I get to see now. The map is just too bad. He can't even get a passport. It's getting denied by Damwon Gaming. They can't get anywhere near the Baron. And they're only happy to have that one control ward to give a bit of spotting above the Baron, because otherwise, that's a whole lot of darkness around the first Baron spawn. They're slowly trying to edge forward. Right now, you saw that barrel did have to go back. Looks like Nuclear also just farming up down on the bot side. Not ready to just uh, start up the Baron just yet. They'll wait a little bit before they do get into that moment. But you notice on the side of Breon Blade, they throw out the Ezreal ultimate because they're just not sure, right? The Alistair and Lucian off the map for that moment. But the second that ultimate comes out, they show in the mid lane, begin to push that one up. And that's just another cooldown that can be used to Check that Baron. We'll see when Domlin Gaming want to start up this objective. Another game when Nogari has been the unsung hero, had a great play that allowed the Galio to mop up some of those kills with his Q, and just in general in the lane has outpressured the Scion that was picked into the Urgot that was picked into the Scion. They were very happy with that matchup, with the way it ended up. Ignite has been taken for the majority of the laning phase, but no real threat onto the Scion. I've liked his roams. We already compliment him again and again for his top laner sense in the first game. Teleports are back up. Summoner spells are back up on most. Only Broccoli, Fate, and I would assume Cube, given that he doesn't currently have the Flash available, are short of their Flashes. So we're waiting to see if Brion Blade can continue to press the pause button and when it feels like Dumb One Gaming feels strong enough to start damaging that Baron. As we have already outlined a couple of times, it'll die fast. And it will. We'll see when they do actually want to make that play. But for now, it looks like everybody's just backing off, buying some more items. We'll have to take a look at uh, what exactly they do finish off here. Looks like a stopwatch, and there's the medallion yeah! for the Galio. Okay, so make High five over here, Valdez. We called listening. it. We knew. <laughs> we knew this boy likes We already his know books. this guy. He's just an avid reader. He loves reading his books. Yeah. Moran Omicron and Magi's both confirmed books. Mm -hmm. He's going to want to flip a couple more pages, especially with the Infernal Drake. That might be part of the reason why they were waiting. Infernal <laughs> Drake will definitely, you know... Hold off on the action. I need my Magi's. Yeah, I need more stacks before we continue on this Baron. That's for sure. Ezreal TPing in here. Looks like they may want to collapse or maybe just go. And okay, we're starting up the Baron. Two-man Baron. And maybe they'll just give up that Infernal for it. Now, it's not the worst trade ever, but it's not an informed trade made by Brion Blade. This is a calculator one by Dam One Gaming. 10% AD and AP, but I'm not going to stop this one. They bring the friends, and this Baron's done so. Yep, there it is. Three Mountain Drakes. Got to be careful about that. They cleared out all the vision. They start that Infernal, and Dam One have enough information to go ahead for it. So now, Baron is taken three and a half minutes here, and they're ahead by 6,000 gold. So they're going to be feeling uh, fantastically about the position. Scion! Okay, Cube gonna get in the way of that. Scion gonna be 1v5 for just a moment, but hey, it's Galio. He's gonna be looking for those stacks. Can he get that taunt? It's gonna get one, but the cleanse is there for fate. Everybody's on the run, and a big knockup! Barrel, the best Alistair getting into the back line, is gonna continue the fight, and everybody on the side of Rion Blade is gonna go down. No hope for them. Triple kill comes through from the thousand gold Galio. This one, solid gold. Dumb one gaming, the death timers are long enough. They're just gonna run it up in the game. That's gonna do it. Okay, Dumb one gaming. They weren't happy with the visual they gave in game number one. They're here to play here in game number two. Finally, Papa. They're ending it in one push as well. Style points abound. 22 stacks, not quite the full book here. Couldn't fi finish the book, <laughs> but he finished Breon Blade. Canyon and Barrel come in, and Dumb One Gaming start to vindicate all the hype. Yeah, honestly, those two guys come in. They had fantastic games for game number two. I'm sure we're going to get to take a look at the last pages of that Majais later on in Showmaker's career. He's not going to be, that's not going to be the only Majais he buys this time around. A pretty easy 2-0 victory here. Game one was a bit shaky, but they make it through. Game two, a lot more convincing for Dom I'm not giving it to you, Valdez. Game one was really bad from the side of Dom Gaming, mean, based on expectation. Two Baron steals, only way they got back into it. However, what I will give you is, if we're talking about Canyon in, if we're talking about Hoyt in, 
that dumb one gaming lineup did live up to hype. A bit of a level one misfire around their blue buff, despite having a vision advantage. Outside of that, if they don't see Ryze come in first, and they're not caught off guard, the duo of Showmaker and Canyon, once they get their bearings, once the five minute mark is passed, Dumb One Gaming falls into place. No one will talk about Nogari enough. He was very good off screen and on screen. He made some great plays as well. But his kind of steady hand in game one and reliability in game two on the Scion, again, echoes of the shy. He's not there yet. He's not the finished article yet, but this was a great series for him. After a substandard promotion series, Canyon had that great jungle contest and first Drake take. And then they turn on the style, and Showmaker is a man that oozes style at every moment. You can see that feat here on the side of Breon Blade. He is the one that is taking this the hardest. He had a couple of games, I have to say, where he was able to shut down Showmaker in that Syndra versus Katarina lane. Had a fantastic start in game number two. He knows that they were very close to taking one game and having this go to a game number three. And should be feeling disappointed right now, as you guys can see. But, I mean, this team, they impressed for sure. I, I'm sure that we're going to see them do well in the Challengers Korea uh, for next year, no doubt. And can you ask for any more than being able to have a reality check for Dam One Gaming, but also seeing the high highs that clearly everyone was whispering about? Teams have faced and felt the Dam One Gaming that we saw on the rip for game number two. So now we know that while it's not all inked in, the potential is still there on both sides, and that means that every dumb one gaming game in LCK Summer, Spring, and even just the Kespa Cup is going to be must-watch League of Legends. Yeah, it definitely will be. And Nuggery setting this up. He's got Showmaker right behind him. This was the, just the beginning of the dominance of these guys. Also, the solo kill here from Barrel was yeah. hilarious. I mean, this guy was fantastic on the Alistair, not just that kind of meme kill, but also in that later game. And the new teleports are hilarious, too. It's like, well, I have one more teleport than you. You're kind of screwed, as nobody is canceling them, and everybody on BRB died down here in the bottom lane. Shout out to Nogari hitting that ultimate, and then coming in to start this fight as well, that kind of ended the game. Any competitive sense, the book was there, and the book read, Dumb One Gaming 2, Breon Blade 0, Alistair Barrel. Again, Hoyt Headbutt was so good. Pulverize. Hoyt was so good on Alistair this pick back at the promotion tournament, and now his lunch has been eaten <laughs> by Beryl. Beryl's actually showing that he's the better Alistair. Oh, yeah. yeah. Alistair gets 700 more damage than the wow. enemy Camille. <laughs> That's what it's all about, baby. 1367 for Broccoli. Sorry, Broccoli. Nobody likes to eat you, and, uh, well, that wasn't the best series for you either. We'll have to see him later on. And, uh, man, that Alistair alone is going to have to be a permaban. doesn't matter who is going up against this Dom one game Who do we lineup. talk to, Valdez? That's the thing. I need to know who the probably? effective yeah. MVP is. We'll find out very shortly. Let's go ahead and see. It's definitely going to be someone from Dom one Gaming. And it's Nogri. Okay, Papa. I see you. I like it. Someone has a ton of rumors that you guys are a solo rank superstar team and scrim team. How do you feel about the 2 nothing win over Brian Blade and all those rumors? So we were expecting to win, but we were definitely making mistakes, and we weren't super happy about that, but we're happy to get the win. So because you got the 2-0, that boosts everybody's expectations. So up until the mid-game in the first match, the opponent, Brian Blade, was winning by a lot. So how were you guys able to come back in that one? When the first turret in the bottom lane uh, went down so quickly, we thought it was going to be really tough to win. But as the rise, because he scales really well, I was able to push the one lane against Cyan very easily. That's basically the main reason we were able to win. Give me a lot of credit for the Baron steal from what I'm hearing from Punch in game number one. 
누가 누가 그랬더라? 이게 만화 없어서 한 누리만 한다고 같이 가더니 스티를 하더라고요. Shackles apparently let them have the Baron, but then all of a sudden, punch hop the wall and stole the Baron. 부활하면서 바로 스티를 가능했는데, 아 콜은 약간 엇갈렸던 거네요. 네, 그러면. 콜이 거의 이제 저는 저, 제가 이제 이거 못 막을 것 같으니까 and 버리고. And that was an ace before that, and then only two people were respawning, able to get that uh, Baron steal. So a bit of miscommunication, perhaps. In terms of, are we gonna go for the Baron or try to go for the steal? So definitely a difference in opinion in that moment uh, for whether we should go for the steal or not. So after the steal, the game totally turned around and you guys showed an ama amazing performance. So the your opponents are always banning all of your champions and they really care about your champion pool. So Nuggery doesn't really feel that way. He didn't really realize that they were trying to ban him out. But he thinks that the opponents really uh, care about the champion compositions rather than what Nuggery is going to play individually. So for today's matches, Canyon had his debut game as the Kha'Zix. So what do you think about his play in the offline match? So in the team house, he plays like a god. So I already knew that he could play very well, even in an offline event. And I thought that he had a, a great game today and made a, a had, had a great debut. The round of eight, you're going to face off against KEG Seoul. What do you think about your opponents? Uh, are you satisfied with having them? And he's like, yeah, uh, satisfied with getting KEG Seoul. And I, I watched them play and they're all really strong online uh, on the ladder. So he expects some really high quality gameplay up against KG Seoul. So it must be very meaningful if you guys can do well in the Kespa Cup and then go into LCK. So in the rest of the games, we want to cover all of our mistakes and show better performances in the future here at Kespa Cup. Nogari, very, very well spoken. Second time I've seen him interview. He was interviewed over yeah. at Spot TV for the promotion tournament as well. So really nice to hear from him. I think they pretty much echo what we were talking about. Game one, dumb one, stole away a victory. Game two, much more deserved stuff outside of a level two misplay around their blue buff. Lot to like about Dumb One Gaming in game number two. And I think both sobering and kind of exciting, this series, which is, again, what the Kesper Cup should show. It shows that not everything is done. We can't already just write it down, but all right, Dumb One Gaming, World Champions 2019. <laughs> there's still work to no. be done, but also there's also payoff for the Whispers. It's not just they're never going to actually perform. They actually yeah. did turn it on. You can say the opposition, you can say et cetera, et cetera, we know now the ceiling is up there, and it's going to be so fun to see them striving because that's what the LCK is about. It's not an elimination tournament. It's not a CSGO major. We're talking about how can you build something that pays off around playoffs, worlds, and MSI. Yeah. And there's still a lot of work to be done, but I'm so excited to see that ascent from Dam one see Griffin try to also come back from what felt like an early ascent but couldn't quite be paid off. These are the storylines that I get really hyped about, and Dam one Gaming, there's something about it. Yeah, I mean, it's just the feeling of this new generation, the new wave of the younger players coming in and trying to make their mark on the LCK. How can they go up against the legendary players, the veterans that are still around? Speaking of legendary players, about an hour break at 8 p.m. Korean Standard Time, SK Telecom T1's LCK 2019 lineup will debut. Yeah, you guys don't want to miss that. So we'll see you in about an hour for SKT versus APK Prince.